Okay, we are back. Uh, let me continue. Uh, then we have defined uh, the V pairing, uh, rather complicated definition in terms of some functions F and G, and it gives uh, uh, a root of unity. Let me give you an example um, for these functions F. So remember, so for example, take M equals to two, then we are looking for a function F. Remember that F was a function such that the divisor of F is uh, M times T uh, minus M times O, um, where T is an M torsion point, right? So uh, what I can actually do is remember that if I write my elliptic curve in this format, then I know a torsion point, a two torsion point, for example, is the point uh, E1 comma zero, that is a two torsion point. And we proved uh, long ago, perhaps, uh, I don't know how long, a few lectures ago, that the divisor of X minus E1 is, none other than two times T minus two times O, right? So that works as F. So I can pick F to be X minus E1, right? And then um, I would need to compute G, but now that I know that G, what G needs to satisfy, uh, I can actually do this. So compose G minus E1 composed it with multiplication by two. And actually, if you remember, we did write down what was the X coordinate of multiplication by two. So this is the X coordinate of two times a point minus E1. We do have a formula for the X coordinate of multiplication by two. And if you write all that down, that function should be the square of a function. So this should be G square or, or up to a constant. I believe it comes out to be exactly that. And then uh, you have your G, okay? And that way you find what G should be and uh, and you can move on. But in general, I do not believe there is a, a, a way to generically do this for every M. Uh, it's actually complicated and there are papers about how to construct these functions uh, for different values of M and that would, we'll see in the method of descent, this comes in, uh, and that's what makes the method of descent kind of complicated because you first have to compute these functions, which are not uh, completely clear. What will be the function for M equals five or M equals seven and so on and so forth. All right, so uh, what I want to do is uh, state and prove some of the properties of the V pairing. So this is proposition uh, 8.1 in the, um, in chapter three of Silverman. Uh, first of all, it is bilinear. By the way, so what this proves is that this pairing has all the properties that are nice about pairings. That is bilinear, is alternating, is non-degenerate, is Galois invariant, and it's compatible. And I'm going to define what all those things are. Bilinear means that EM of S1 plus S2 comma t is em of s1 t times em of s2 t the, the uh, um, operation on the right hand side is of course multiplication um, em of s t1 plus t2 is em of s t1 times em of s t2 um, the map is the pairing is alternating Uh, what that means is that, well, first, if you pair a torsion point with itself, you get the trivial torsion, um, the trivial root of unity, and uh, therefore, um, the if you try to uh, commute it, uh, exchange S by T, you don't get exactly the same, you get the inverse. Okay, so it's not a commutative operation, the pairing, uh, but it's alternating in that the, the sign changes. Uh, if it was in additive notation or in multiplicative notation, you get the inverse. C 
it is non-degenerate. Uh, non-degenerate means that if you have triviality, if you fix one coordinate uh, t and it is trivial for all s, then you get that t is zero. So this is for fixed t. Uh, if this happens, then t must be zero. So this is sort of like the kernel on the left and the right are uh, trivial. And um, by the way, because of the alternating property, this property of the non-degeneracy can be flipped to either side. And D, it is Galois invariant. This is very important. Uh, it says that uh, for all automorphisms of, um, of your base field, not Q, but uh, K bar, Uh, it turns out that, well, uh, definitely the automorphisms act on roots of unity, which are algebraic. So what happens if I act with Galois on a root of unity? It's the same action as if you first act with Galois on the torsion points that you are evaluating the pairing at. So that's the, what the Galois invariance means. It just means that Galois commutes with the Vey pairing, in other words. and e. It is compatible, and this refers to the fact that we define the Vey pairing for M. So what happens if I do a multiple of M, I have another Vey pairing, how do they interact with each other? So if S is in this kind of torsion, M times M prime, and T is an M torsion point, then that pairing for M M prime of S and T is the same that the pairing for M prime S and T. Okay, so they just, um, that just said that they they talk nicely to each other, the Vey pairings uh, cross uh, levels. So let's, let's prove these, um, these properties. Part A says that the map is bilinear. So let me prove the first line just because that's easier. The second uh, line is actually more complicated with T, but um, <clears throat> it's in the book. Um, so let me just say what happens. Um, if I add two torsion points on the left side, um, this is uh, by definition, this is G of X plus S1 plus S2 over G of X. By the way, remember what I said about the X being constant that prove that this doesn't depend on what X on E I choose. I can pick any X and I will get the same root of unity. So that X that appears out of nowhere, uh, it doesn't matter in the definition uh, which one you pick. Okay, so this is by definition. I'm gonna multiply and divide by uh, factor of G evaluated at X plus S1. So I'm going to multiply and divide, first divide by G X plus S1, because I want that to appear. Uh, I want this to appear to make that term appear, right? Okay, so, um, and then divide and multiply by the same term and lo and behold, uh, this term is now this term, uh, but this term here is now the second term, of, uh, uh, actually the other way around. Um, this term here is this term, right? Uh, with S1. And then this term here is this term, except that now I picked X, as I said, it doesn't matter what X you pick. So let's call uh, Y or X prime if you want. I'm gonna call it X plus is one, okay? Then this is uh, G of X prime plus S two divided by G of X prime times G of X plus S one 
divided by gx. And this by definition, now x prime is some other point on the elliptic curve, doesn't matter which one I pick. So this is em of s2, uh, comma t times em of s1, comma t. And that proves it. Uh, multiplication on the roots of unity is commutative, so that that you can put em of s1 t first if you want. That proves a. All right. Let's prove B. B um, is that property, the alternating property. So let me um, let me restate it here. I want to prove that uh, T T is one. So if I apply it on the same torsion, and that uh, if I try to commute it, it doesn't quite commute, but it's alternating, meaning that I get its inverse. Okay. Um, the second part actually follows from the first. Uh, so this implies this because, uh, so note that uh, EM of S plus T comma S plus T from the first property, this would be one. And from the bilinearity, which we've already proved, not, not the second part, but uh, uh, let me maybe make a note here that the second part of, um, of part A, I'm not proving that it's actually a little bit more complicated and you can find it in the book. But in any case, assuming the bilinearity, now uh, EM of S plus T, S plus T is EM of SS, EM of ST, EM of TS, and EM of TT. This is one, this is one, the left-hand side is one, and therefore, uh, this has to be equal to one. So there are inverses, there are multiplicative inverses. Okay, so I just need to prove for you that T and T pair to one. Great. Uh, so how do we do that? This is actually, again, quite a complicated proof. Um, so First, remember that uh, the translation maps from E to E that send Q to P plus Q. Um, what is the divisor of, I'm going to compute quite a big divisor, is this function that I want to compute the divisor of F composed with uh, multiply or uh, translation by n t. What is that? Uh, let me compute the divisor of each one of these functions individually first. So, what is the divisor of f composed with translation by multiplication by n t? That translation is sort of like a translation in pre-calculus or in calculus. You have a function, if you translate whatever properties were at X, now the property is at, um, where is it, at, like at X minus N, whatever property was at X, now it's at X minus N. So it just shifts all the properties by N T, by whatever point is down here. So since the divisor of F was mt minus mo, the new divisor is m1 minus nt um, minus m um, times minus nt. That's uh, those, are maybe you yeah, should not to confuse things. Let me write the appropriate brackets here. This is like this, and this is minus n times uh, that divisor. 
Okay. So um, that is just because I've shifted where there are zeros and the poles where of F by uh, N T. Okay. Um, so then the divisor of the entire product of F composed with all these shifts with these translations is going to be M times a sum of uh, 1 minus N T minus the sum of minus N uh, uh, times T, right? Uh, and uh, what is that? Well, those are two different shifts of T, but we're running from N zero up to N minus one. So no matter how we do this, those two quantities, as they run through all the values of N, are gonna run through all the numbers from zero up to N minus one in both counts, and uh, they're going to all cancel out. Okay, so at the end of the day, actually, I all get is, uh, not O, but zero is the zero divisor. It all cancels out. Huh. So if it is the zero div div uh, divisor, it must be a constant function. There's no zeros or poles. So that is a constant function. So uh, that product of F composed with translations uh, must be constant. And um, let me go to the next page. So the product of F composed with um, with translation that is constant. And now let T prime be in E with uh, M times T prime equals T then um, then what we know is that the product of G composed with translation by N T prime to the Mth power, that is going to be G composed with that, G to the Mth power we know is F composed with multiplication by M map. So this is the same as the product of F composed with tau n t, uh, which is a constant. And therefore, if I call this, um, let's actually move the parentheses out, then uh, this function inside here, I'm gonna call it g. And um, this implies that g to the m is constant then it's going to be that G is constant as well. Uh, by the same trick we did before, that G is amorphism, and it would take m roots of unity, uh, but that's only finitely many values, so it has to be uh, constant. And, um, and therefore, here is G of x, which is the product from 0 to m minus 1, uh, G evaluated at X plus N T prime. That's what G does. Um, this is also G is constant. So this has to be the same value that if I apply G evaluated at X plus T prime, but G evaluated at X plus T prime is the product from zero up to M minus one of G X plus n plus one t prime, okay? Um, because I can add one t prime to the n times t prime and then I get an n plus one t prime. And now I can cancel in this equality, there's a lot of terms that are uh, on both sides. So cancel common terms out 
And what this tells me is that um, um, the only one that survives on the left-hand side is G of X. And the one that survives on the right-hand side is G of X plus M T prime, um, which is uh, M times T prime is T. So this is G of X plus T. And therefore, EM of TT, which is G of X plus T over G of X is one, as we wanted to prove. That's something else. Okay, so it is a bizarre proof where we constructed some function that was constant so that we could cancel things out and just, it was, it, the purpose was to construct a function that both uh, g of x and g of x plus t appear as factor of those functions and everything cancels out and then you end up getting the g of x equals g of x plus t, which is eventually what we wanted to prove. Um, and um, and to compute the value of the the pairing at t comma t. <clears throat> okay. So um let's prove now. Is there any question about this? Um, let's prove part C, which was the non-degeneracy. So suppose, let's suppose it is degenerate. So suppose that we have, uh, that this is one uh, for all S in EM uh, for a fixed T. Okay, so here there is a, a fixed uh, T such that um, no matter what S is, I get once. Okay. Um, uh, so what that means is that G of X plus S equals G of X uh, for all S in EM. And this is for the G function that comes from this particular value of T, right? This is just for this particular value of T. This happens for all S. Um, now, recall that uh, a fact that um, when we were proving that the degree of M was M squared, we proved this fact, or we perhaps alluded to this fact, that the map from the kernel of M torsion map uh, to the automorphisms Uh, of of this extension uh, that sends an M torsion point to the automorphism that you get uh, induced by translation by S is an isomorphism. Okay, so um, what that says is that um, Um, what that implies is that uh, G itself, uh, with that property, uh, belongs to, uh, you see that uh, translation by S does nothing to it. Um, so th this property right here, What it says is that um, translation by S does nothing to G and therefore is in the fixed field by M star. 
uh, or a translation by yeah is in the fixed field of m star because any of those automorphisms actually affects g they don't do anything to g and therefore g must be in the base field of that extension of uh, of function fields that extension of function fields tells me that g is in m star of k bar of e on this function field and what that says is that if you remember m star here is that the pre-composition with uh or phi star here is the very first phi star we encountered which was the pre-composition uh, with phi uh, or with um, a post-composition with phi in any case this is saying that there is an h such that g is h composed with m Okay, if G is there, then G is H composed with multiplication by M. And what this says then is that uh, then H composed with M to the Mth power, that is the same that G to the Mth power, but we know by construction that is F composed with multiplication by M. And therefore, since multiplication by M is surjective, if H to the Mth if H composed with multiplication by M to the Mth power equals F composed with multiplication by M, then H to the M and F should equal. So F equals the Mth power of H. Hence, uh, M times the divisor of H, the divisor of H to the M is M times the divisor of H, should be the divisor of F, uh, which should be uh, the divisor of F I know is MT minus MO. And therefore uh, the divisor of H is simply T minus O. Huh, uh, but then that says in Picard, it says that T is equivalent to O. And remember if you, keep track of your Riemann rock results, we prove that in genus one, if T is equivalent to O, then T equals O. Okay, the, the, that um, can happen. Um, um, but another way to see it is that H is a function that has a pole of order one at O. But that can be. If you remember the consequences of Riemann Rock for genus one said that the L uh, one space, so the L of O, the dimension is one, it includes only constant functions. Um, the constant functions are there and those are the only ones. So H itself would be a constant function. If it's a constant function, then the divisor has to be zero and then T has to be identically O. So uh, that's what we get here, that T is identically O, uh, and that's what we wanted to prove, that if we have a fixed T uh, that gives me a degeneracy, that for every S I get one, actually T is O. Okay, so that's uh, precisely uh, what I wanted to prove, degeneracy, that there is, this is not, uh, uh, that this is not degenerate. Okay, and again, because of the alternating pair, you can switch this now and you could also fix S and if it happens for every T, then S is zero as well. All right, um, next, next property, we're moving uh, nice and right along. So uh, it's the Galois invariance. So suppose you have an automorphism of K bar and, um, and then we have um, F and G are the functions attached to, uh, to a torsion point T, then I'm gonna call F and G uh, sigma, uh, the functions attached to T sigma, you see, um, so if F and G are functions attached to T, 
then um so the the coefficients of f and g will depend on t uh, but if i change t by sigma the way we define everything the functions itself are going to um are going to change by acting with sigma on the coefficients of f will have the same effect as um as if they were attached to t sigma in any case now once you know that if you agree to that then em evaluated at s sigma t sigma so if i act with sigma on those points that will be um g sigma x sigma plus s sigma or uh g sigma x sigma so take um take a point x act on it with sigma and use that point to define your uh your vape pairing then these functions g i can take the sigma all the way out because it's a is a uh, field automorphism and you will get this with sigma acting on everything and this is the vape pairing uh with sigma acting on it and that is uh, what the property says it says to satisfy and finally uh the compatibility condition uh what is the divisor of f to the m prime power that's just going to be uh m times m prime t minus m times m prime o it's just going to if f had a zero for the rem now it has an order a zero of order m times m prime same for the zero uh, and uh the divisor or g composed with m prime to the m m prime power that is going to be f composed with uh, multiplication by m m prime to the m prime power okay and therefore if i apply the mm prime um vape pairing this is going to be the same as uh, g composed with m prime evaluated at x plus s over g m prime evaluated at x and that is g of uh y plus m prime evaluated at s over g of y with uh, y equals m primes x and that is em of m prime s times t that proves the compatibility condition between levels of the vape pairing. All right. Um, I think I'm essentially out of time. So I will, uh, next time I will prove uh, two properties of the vape pairing, which are actually what make the vape pairing one of the things that are quoted so many times. First, something I think I mentioned already, that if you have an elliptic curve over K and the M torsion is defined over K, then the Mth roots of unity are in the base field. That's a, a, strong, a strong condition on what torsion subgroups can appear over a number field, for example. And the second part is a, a slightly more um, technical uh, condition, which is that Remember, we defined when we talked about the Tate module, we defined the representation, the piatic Galois representation attached to the Tate module of an elliptic curve. And I mentioned that the uh, the determinant of that representation is the cyclotomic character. So we will prove that also using the vape pairing. Surprisingly, it's like, why are those two things related? It turns out that the vape pairing is exactly what you need to prove that. So um, I'll prove those things just to remind you at the beginning of the next lecture what the vape pairing is, and then we will move on. From there, um, uh, we will move on. I'm gonna jump to um, talk about elliptic curves or the finite fields after that. 
Um, and uh, and then after finite fields, we will prove, uh, we'll talk about elliptic curves over the complex numbers, and then we'll move into elliptic curves over um, uh, local fields. All right, so I'll stop here. Thank you.